Well, John and Christina, the Brogdons tell me they were hoping Preston would be able to medically retire, but around the two-year mark marking his injury, they say they were met with something else. 223 shots fired, shots fired, I'll check out. February 9th, 2022 is a night Preston Brogdon will never forget. Where are you hit? Where are you hit? The former Yavapai Apache Nation sergeant shot in the line of duty near Camp Verde. The decision not to die is, he's, uh, he ain't gonna kill me. Body camera footage shows him screaming in pain as a fellow officer drags him into a squad car. That shooting suspect was later found dead. Crews airlifted Preston to a Phoenix hospital with life-threatening injuries. I lost seven quarts of blood, got a shattered hip, shattered pelvis, broken femur. Um, severed my small intestine, caused me all kinds of nerve, muscle damage. The following months filled with surgeries and extensive physical therapy. And now a new challenge for Preston, wife Bailey, and their five kids. They were like, okay, it's been two years. Um, yeah, we've got to let you go. At least you have a disability. Preston shared this letter with Fox 10, alerting Preston to his termination, stating in part, the Yavapai Apache Nation has terminated your employment due to not being able to return to full-time job duties as a police sergeant per your doctor's return to work status reports. You give me a Purple Heart, you give me Medal of Valor, and then you just get out of here. I, I don't understand that, so... Um, yeah. It's, it's one thing to soak up all the good media and, you know, all the pats on the back and the feel-good community coming together when he first got shot, and it's um, gotten easier for them to forget, and now it's just toss them aside. As for the Bromptons, they say they're leaning on God for their next steps. Doors are going to open for us, and in the meantime, if we can help this not happen to at least one other person, then that's a good enough reason for us to share the story. And out to several members of the tribe, a voicemail left for a leader in the police department was also not returned, but we will continue to reach out and ask questions. Reporting live, Lauren Clark, Fox 10 News. Lauren, thank you. Tonight, a Fox 10 investigates exclusive. A lawsuit claims three Valley strip clubs used an elaborate scheme to charge customers credit cards for excessively high amounts without authorization. Nearly 20 alleged victims sued these clubs, claiming they were drugged and robbed in VIP rooms. Fox 10 investigator Justin Lum joins us live now with a story you will only see here on Fox 10. Left incapacitated, waking up lost and confused to find several credit card transactions worth tens of thousands of dollars. That's how plaintiffs describe what happened to them at three clubs. The total amount of money charged between them easily clears a million dollars. The alleged victims feeling violated and stripped of peace of mind. Within the nightlife of the valley, there's a two-mile stretch from Loop 202 down North Scottsdale Road past McDowell. Some looking to stay out after dinner and drinks. Take a drive and you'll notice three strip clubs on this stretch, Dream Palace in Tempe, Skin Cabaret, and Bones Cabaret in Scottsdale. All three are now at the center of a civil lawsuit referred to as Sister Clubs, the latest complaint and demand for a jury trial filed back in January. The complaint accuses the ownership of racketeering and conspiracy, as well as several other allegations. There are now nearly 20 plaintiffs in the case, and we spoke to two who want to remain anonymous. We'll call the first alleged victim, Joe. Joe says he and his friends were at Bones Cabaret four years ago when he got separated after going to the bathroom. I remember kind of walking through what I thought was like a cloud of like either perfume or makeup or something, uh, like dusty. Uh, from one of the kind of like cracks of lights that was kind of coming through. Um, and that's when I ended up actually in a VIP room and started to get these symptoms that felt not alcohol related, something else. Do you believe you were drugged? I do, yes. Joe confirms he did not take a drug test, nor did other plaintiffs in the case. But they all say they became incapacitated after entering VIP rooms. I felt like I kind of didn't have control of the situation. That was really the first instance that I knew. Joe says he couldn't get out of the VIP room while his friends couldn't get in before he was moved to Dream Palace. The next day, he discovered several charges on multiple credit cards. How much was the total? 
just under $72,000. Joe's not alone. Fox 10 obtained Scottsdale police reports specifically linked to the clubs mentioned in the lawsuit. In September of 2021, a financial crimes detective says he started seeing many cases reported by alleged victims detailing common factors like VIP rooms, having memory loss, signing and thumbprinting paperwork, photos taken of them, and extremely high credit card charges. Reports say patrons visited from several different states, telling police they were brought into these VIP rooms. Just confused, felt lost, spaced out. I had no, no clue where I was at that point. Another plaintiff we'll call Bobby describes the same experience. Bobby admits to only two transactions he agreed to, paying for drinks and a private dance. But after that, he says he authorized nothing else at Skin Cabaret. He later found eight transactions on his credit card account. Didn't think that these were actually legitimate transactions at that point. It just didn't, did just seem unconscionable that this would even happen. His total amount of charges, the highest of all the plaintiffs. $181,000. And the fallout has been traumatic. Certainly strain on not only myself, my family, uh, wife. I had to get my parents involved. Uh, you know, we have little children as well, so just the impact emotionally was pretty difficult to bear. Joe was in the Air Force, stationed in Arizona, now feeling the stress. It's been literally life and career altering for me. My career took a detour that off of the trajectory that I had worked hard to provide for myself. They all tell the same story, um, yet none of them have met. Rod Galarza is the attorney representing nearly 20 plaintiffs in the lawsuit Police reports reveal how the VIP room process works. After negotiating a price with the hostess, the customer signs a contract, provides a credit card, ID, gives a thumbprint, and takes a photo. But as the lawsuit states, plaintiffs believe they were somehow drugged, claiming they barely remember signing any contract at all. They vaguely recall someone yelling at them to quit messing around and hold the pen properly so that they could sign uh, a document on a clipboard. Uh, alternatively being yelled at by a bouncer or a hostess to sit up straight and smile. It felt like watching a movie through my own eyes, almost an out-of-body experience because in my mind I'm screaming to myself to this is, you know, that this is wrong to leave, to fight my way out, but they have the bouncer at the door, the disorienting hallways, like I don't think I'm going to be able to make it out. One plaintiff claims club reps approve transactions via text with credit card companies by using the Face ID function, holding the owner's iPhone in front of their face to unlock it. The complaint says Todd Borowski is the sole director, shareholder, and the president of Wisnowski Incorporated, which does business under Skin Cabaret and Bones Cabaret. In a court filing by the defendants last month, they deny all allegations. Borowski's lawyer released a statement to Fox 10 that reads in part, quote, the cases are baseless. It's like going into a casino and asking for your money back after you choose to be there. Dennis Willinchick goes on to say that the plaintiffs were not drugged and the dancers were independent contractors, citing the signed documents and photos, saying, quote, their credit card companies also investigated and approved the transactions. Joe confirms his credit card company left him on the hook with the entire debt. They ended up holding me accountable for those uh, charges and I'm still recovering from that. Galarza says charges went beyond credit card limits for clients specifically with American Express accounts. In each one of these cases, there, an, an American Express card was used, and in virtually every case, the uh, credit limit was exceeded. Bobby's Amex credit card limit was around $22,000. Yet his charges totaled more than 180000 A spokesperson with Amex responded saying, quote, American Express policy is to review all disputes, including considering evidence submitted by our card members and seeking merchant support for the disputed charges. We followed our standard policies and procedures in this case. Due to pending litigation, we do not have further comment at this time. According to Galarza, the average total charges for each plaintiff is $72,000, and with nearly 20 victims, the sum is more than $1.1 million. Are you still traumatized? Oh, yeah. I've done as much as I can think to compartmentalize the situation and try to control what I can control and get over it, but every time I make progress in my life to move on, I get an, e an email about it, I get a text about it, I remember that, you know, I could be able to afford X, Y, or Z, or have savings built up, 
and capitalize and have those options that I've rightfully earned, but that all got taken away from me. Scottsdale PD is aware and a spokesperson confirms police are working with the Arizona Attorney General's office on cases involving Bones Cabaret, Skin Cabaret, and Dream Palace. The AG's office declined to comment. No trial date has been set at this time. I think to me it's shocking how organized and sophisticated it all seems, right? Because all of these people seemingly don't know each other and they're all reporting similar things. Mm -hmm. And then the credit card charges being racked up, they had access to their phones. It's just... The stories are extremely similar. I mean, we found police reports dating back three to four years, and then you go to the Be Better Business Bureau and you see several reviews and complaints on these businesses, and all of these incidents are describing the same alleged scheme that we've been reading about, uh, that people feel like they're out of sorts, incapacitated, and these credit card charges are enormous. And nobody's been charged yet. There have no been criminal no criminal, criminal charges, charges at, at all. Active investigation. Right are the now. women who were involved in this, the dancers, are they long gone? Some of them still there? I mean, this is kind of a, you know, the community that travels a little bit. It's a good question of who is exactly involved, but we know that it takes a number of people to be involved in this type of scheme that we're reading about because, as we read in these reports, there's a bouncer that keeps someone isolated in this VIP room, and there are the dancers or independent contractors that are working to get these contracts signed, allegedly, uh, and a manager or some sort of staff member running the, the cards um, in a span of a few hours, and they wake up to these incredible charges. Yeah. I do want to point out too, you mentioned that this goes back a couple years, right? Mm -hmm. This isn't just this year that's no, what's this, happening. This is a few years, three to four years at least. We saw uh, dating back to 2021 and MCSO, just to note, is involved as well because Dream Palace is on a county island oh, in okay. Tempe. So they are assisting Scottsdale PD however they can, but it looks like Scottsdale PD is the lead on the, this case okay. and we'll be keeping track. Okay. okay, keep us up to date on it. That's Justin, amazing. I know you will. We have some new information now on that deadly motorcycle crash out on the Superstition Freeway earlier this month. DPS says this uh, woman, 18-year-old driver, responsible, going more than 150 miles an hour, Rachel Berg. Court documents say she was speeding in her Corvette March 12th when she struck and killed this man, 46-year-old Michael Clark. He was on his motorcycle at about Dobson Road. Clark was a veteran. He previously served for more than a decade as a police officer in Tacoma, Washington. He had moved to the valley and was working as a Tempe park ranger. Berg claimed she didn't see the motorcycle in time to avoid it, although after hitting it, she stopped and tried to render aid, attempting to do CPR. Two drunk driving crashes in Mesa moments apart. Both happened this morning near the U.S. 60 and Country Club. And tonight, an officer is recovering, and two drivers are in big trouble. Fox 10's Kinsey Beach is live with dramatic video tonight. Kinsey. Yeah, that's right, Brian. It all started right here on Country Club Drive. A female driving a Jeep rear-ended a car right here on this corner, but then she veered off the roadway, crashing through this fence. That car ended up going into the embankment and actually ended up overturned on the 60 freeway. You know, people should be able to drive down the road and not worry about, you know, having somebody who's impaired hitting them. Law enforcement is stressing the severity of impaired driving as it puts countless lives at risk. One simple mistake like what happened last night, that could have ended not only in our suspect driver being killed, but they could have killed somebody else. In the early morning hours of Sunday, a driver police say is facing extreme DUI charges, was found inside their overturned vehicle on the 60 freeway after rear-ending one car and driving off the side of the embankment. Mesa Police Detective Richard Encinas says first responders rushed to block off lanes on the 60 to get the female driver out of the car safely. Rescue mode first, you know, preservation of life. That's when a second accident happened. It comes back to uh, personal responsibility. A driver going full speed towards flashing police lights and fire trucks, cones and flares hit a parked police car. That driver also believed to be under the influence. You might think you're not impaired, but you are. And not only do you cause an accident, but you, you know, this person could have very easily died. Arizona is a zero tolerance state. So please say getting behind the wheel even after a few drinks can land you behind bars. 
Detective Encinas tells me that that Mesa PD officer that was hit last night thankfully did not sustain any major injuries. Both the names of both of those drivers and their charges are expected to be released tomorrow. Live in Mesa, Kenzie Beach, Fox 10 News. All right, Kenzie, thank you. Two more drivers are facing charges tonight after a road rage incident Saturday afternoon in Scottsdale. DPS says 27-year-old Connor Cullens got into an argument with another driver. It caused a crash at the, at the Loop 101 in Shea, and then Collins fired at the other driver but missed. No one was hurt, but Collins is in jail facing charges of endangerment, aggravated assault, and firing a gun within city limits. The other driver is facing endangerment charges.